our mission was, if it was not in the song, it shouldn't be in the park. And we all know that song. Standing on the corner of Winslow, Arizona, such a fine sight to see. Fans from every corner of the world come to this famous corner, humming the words and snapping selfies. Turns out, Winslow has a lot of picture-worthy corners. From a giant bulldog to the world's smallest church, it's a small town with some big history. Winslow was founded as a railroad town. It was really a railroad boom town through the 1920s. From trains to automobiles to planes. The 1920s was an extremely busy decade in Winslow because in 1926 we became part of Route 66. In 1930, La Posada Hotel opened. And in 1929, our very historic airport opened as one of the 12 mandatory stops on the very first transcontinental passenger airline in the country. With the revitalization of Route 66, downtown Winslow is hopping again. Just like it was in the 50s and 60s, with tourism, people coming off of I-40 to explore the town. And there's really a lot to explore in downtown Winslow. There's several historic sites. There's new restaurants and shops. The word is out. Winslow is a really cool town. La Posada, I think in many respects, had nine lives because it opened as one of the most expensive uh, Fred Harvey hotels ever created in 1930, right in time for the Great Depression. And they had planned that rail travel was going to establish a monopoly across the Southwest. They had no concept of cars. So they survived the Depression, and then as they get back to the great, you know, sort of interstate travel rush that's going to happen after the war, everybody got in an automobile and drove right on by. The hotel closed, and the Santa Fe Railroad used it as their division headquarters for 40 years. And so in 1994, when we first looked at it, it was an unwanted building. And the railroad was saying, we want out. I mean, if we could just walk away from it, we would. Uh, if you can imagine, they paid us to take this building. It was a huge cleanup project. But once they completed renovations, Daniel said it was like a train picking up speed and we have literally had double-digit growth every year with the exception of 2020. That was a rough year for everybody. Right now, we're at the entrance to the cinder block court. It's what uh, you would normally think of as a greenhouse for a very rich uh, Spanish Don. He would bring his citrus in in the winter and it would survive the winter and then it could go back out into the gardens. And it's actually all part of a very much a fictional history that Mary Coulter, the architect, uh, created for this building. Prior to Coulter, in the era of the first railroad hotels, they would build a hotel and it was going to be something from Europe, or it was going to be Victorian, or it was going to be... The notion was, there really wasn't any culture here. So Coulter looked at the place and said, okay, I love the Hopis, I love this desert landscape, I love the way the light runs across the landscape, I want to build a building that appreciates that. That is the very essence of what the arts and crafts style is about. The famous Turquoise Room restaurant still incorporates locally sourced meats and produce to create southwestern and Spanish dishes. Probably the biggest thing that we've done recently is improved the bar. The bar was originally this horseshoe shaped bar that was really wonderful, copper, but it was too small for the expansion at the restaurant and so we've lengthened it and improved it. And the thing I love about the bar is that we utilized a local artist, John Sutman to build the entire bar fabricated. You'll also discover a large and unexpected art gallery. I just think it's a very different space for a hotel and it's, it's a space that draws people in because it just, it stands out as it's not a, a regular hallway with a series of guest rooms on it. It is this whole little gallery that just appears in the middle of the building. The rooms on the eastern side of the hotel have gotten a recent facelift with custom furniture and individual balconies. And they are named after recent famous guests like Elon Musk, Jackson Brown, and Diane Keaton. La Posada is a little quirky. Uh, we're not a place that has uh, Coca-Cola machines in the lobby. 
there might be a big step up going into your bathroom because they had to raise the level for draining. There's a lot of quirks. But the trade-off is it's a real experience. I think that's what really brings people back. That's a big part of not just La Posada, but Winslow. It's a real town. The Harvey girls were singly responsible for taming the West. It was humorist Will Rogers who said, the Harvey girls kept the West in food and wives. Fred Harvey and his Harvey girls, they established quality service. They were the first to make the rough and rugged travel through the Southwest a pleasure trip. He really franchised the idea of, you know, quality food, of a good experience. We're really in the earlier years, you didn't really have that. It was the birth of the Harvey Houses. Harvey House would be a, a hotel starting in 1876. It was the first Harvey House in, uh, in Florence, Kansas. And his franchise was so strong that it went on for years. And look at the Grand Canyon, at El Tovar. You know, you're, you're talking about the Harvey Houses around. They're still La Posada. And the Harvey girls that provided the impeccable service in those houses had to be a very specific type. Women, 18 to 30, single, good character, don't smoke. They lived in a dorm with a watchful house mother, a strict curfew, and strict rules. No jury, no makeup, and they had to sign a contract, and no getting married. <laughs> Harvey girls pioneered refinement in the West by providing warm, professional hospitality and great food. How better way do you tame a West than send a good, clean cut gal out West? We're at the Motor Palace Mercantile in Winslow, Arizona, just off of Route 66. Our primary focus is Made in USA. Like our t-shirts, we buy some of our t-shirts from a farmer in Texas who grows the cotton, mills it, makes his shirts. We also try to find Arizona goods. So, I mean, we do have tourist goods, but we also wanted a shop for our locals to be able to come in and buy gifts. But oh, obviously an overriding theme of motorcycles, automotive, because that's our passion. And um, we love Route 66, so we tie into that. You know, there's the rom romance of Route 66 that you, you hear a lot about now. We, uh, Lori and I did a couple, a little mini trip, just kind of caught some of the California part, and, and uh, it just kind of planted a seed that you wanted to see more of it. So exactly 10 years ago was the first time we rode all of Route 66. So we started in LA and we rode all the way to Chicago, and we were on two Sportsters, and it was the most magical trip. I'm not a merchant by trade, I'm a photographer, I'm a creative person, and Route 66 is about storytelling. So the idea of owning a building on Route 66 and being part of that community really appealed to both of us, and it's absolutely lived up to what we thought it would be. The building was built in 1898 as a bakery. So it was a bakery up until about the 1940s, and then it became a department store, and most of the older generation in town remember this as Lehman's department store. And Mr. Lehman was a Holocaust survivor and he still had his tattoo on his wrist. And some of my Navajo customers said they had a name for him, which I can't pronounce because Navajo is a very difficult language. And I asked what it meant and they said, it's man who chases you down the street. So if you walked by the door and didn't walk in, he'd run out and grab you in. And they'd say, okay, what are you gonna buy today? And if you said nothing, he'd say, okay, goodbye. And he'd push you out the door. So it has a colorful history. It's always shifting and evolving. So we have our tourist goods, we have collectible motorcycle goods. And then the midsection we call the backroom treasure hunt. So when we bought this building, it was an antique store, and the couple who sold the building wanted to be rid of everything. So we've opened up the mid-room with a real variety of different goods, and the vintage clothes have been very popular, especially with teenagers. The first building that we bought in Winslow was an old pool hall that we've converted into our house. Well, we have a lot of motorcycles. <laughs> so we went on the hunt for a bigger building. This building's about 4,200 square feet which was perfect for a storefront, a midsection workspace, and a back secret cool motorcycle room. 
They're just motorcycles that, you know, over the years uh, followed me home and I liked and I guess I ended up with a collection by accident. I just bought motorcycles, buy another one, keep the old one and after a long time you end up with a bunch of motorcycles. This was actually originally a separate building and this was uh, Cresswell's trucking or something like that, but it was carts, you know, horse cart, carts and stuff like that. And it's uh, built in sometime in the 1890s. Winslow's history is all in the 1890s when it was built. So that was kind of our, our theme when we were finishing out the store, to just create a vibe of stepping back in time.